Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Now today is going to be a fun one because I want to show you some cool ways, three different versions of how we can use printed vellum. Now I've got a couple of different packs here just in case you have one or the other and it doesn't really matter what you have. I'm going to quickly flick through these both. And of course, uh, there probably are ways, well, there is ways that you can create your own vellum that is similar to this, not quite exactly the same, but somewhat similar uh, that you could do as well. But I'm not going to cover that in this video. This is for sort of the pre-made uh, vellum, pre-already done in these booklets. Now, this one here, this is from Prima, and this is just gorgeous. I got this one at scrapbook.com. They have lots of great coupons. I will leave a coupon code uh, down in the description box below this if there is one available, so check there. And there are lots and lots of different designs in here. And my favorite thing about this is the first ones are the almost kind of pearlescent paper, I would say, pearlescent vellum, sorry. And then there's kind of the silvery ones. Oh, I love these people. I can't wait to use these. Um, but then the second half of the pack here is going to be the gold versions of them. So you'll see in just a second, those roses are absolutely gorgeous. Now, actually, there are two sheets of every single one, and I'm just picking up both sheets so that you can, um, you know, go through it nice and quickly. But there are two sheets of every single one in both gold and silver. So there's four of the same design, two in silver and two in gold in the pad. It's quite thick and there's a lot of vellum to use. Now the other one here, the three quarter, this is the nature and textures. And this one I picked up from uh, when I was in Auckland at Ribbon Rose. This one was, I think $10 New Zealand um, dollars, obviously. Uh, and I picked this one up and thought, I just couldn't resist it. <laughs> there was lots of fun things that I could think of using. Some of them are more backgrounds like the music notes and the book text and I can't wait to use those but I'm going to show you three different ways that we can go ahead and use them. All are relatively quick and simple. I'm going to do three different versions and just show you some ways that I think that you could use up this beautiful type of vellum. Of course, these would go great in art journals or scrapbooking or um, extra pages in a junk journal and things like that, which I absolutely love. I actually use some vellum pages in my uh, diary. I have a diary I keep for work and I add in some extra pages, you know, just because I think it's pretty to look at um, and it separates different topics and things for me. Uh, first of all, I am going to start off using a gold sheet of this rose. So you can see there's still another gold sheet in there if I ever need it again <laughs> so there's no hoarding tendencies and I thought this one was a little bit different using the gold because I think the silver the clear one is is much easier to use I am going to use this on a piece of wild dandelion cardstock which is basically a bright yellow this is from Gina K and it is going to sink into the background a little bit I'm using Master Layouts 9, and that gives us this beautiful window die ready to go. Now, I am speeding through a little bit of this video because I try and keep my videos shorter. I try really hard, and actually, it's it's tricky when I'm showing you three complete cards from from beginning to end. So that's why this does move, you know, pretty fast, I will say, and I definitely cut some things out. But hopefully there's definitely enough information in here that you can recreate these or use what you have at home to create something similar. Now, by all means, you could use any type of window here. If you have a little peekaboo die or a window die or a, you know, an arch, you could use all of that all of any shape dies, any circles, stars, all those things you could use for a really similar look here. Uh, I just have the window die and so I thought I would use it. Now you saw that I cut this down and actually there's a little bit of the lady's head in there, her hair, um, but by the time you cut this, no one is going to know that that is not just another piece of foliage at the side. So sometimes it's better to think less and actually <laughs> no one is going to know what that probably originally was because I love these little roses, I love these little flowers, and I just think this is going to be a really delicate and easy background to create with the vellum. Now I've got the window and I have put some foam tape on there so the window is going to start, sort of pop up and this is just the easy part where I can pop this down directly onto the vellum, place it where I want it to go and this is quite a big window. It's actually going to be framed nicely by my um, card base which is four and a quarter by five and a half inches and it is a beautiful, beautiful bright yellow. Now absolutely you could do this on white cardstock and then I think that would look really nice as well because it's going to... Um, you know show off that more gold part of the vellum however I didn't want the window to clash as well and also I like trying something a little bit different I like showing you you know that you can use colored cardstock as well 
Then on the back here, I'm going to add in some double-sided tape, just because I prefer uh, double-sided tape when I'm using vellum. I think liquid glue often is too easy to, you know, accidentally use a teeny bit much and you get that warping, whereas I definitely don't want to ruin the cards or the vellum by getting any sort of warping. So by using the double-sided adhesive, I can avoid that completely. And so as you can see, when I put the white window on here, it stands out beautifully from that background. And it almost just looks like, you know, a stamp, but with that pearlescent, you know, shimmer on it. Uh, hard to explain in the background. So, I mean, you could do this with a stamp by all means, but you're going to not have that shimmer part unless you, you know, cut around it and then added it like I did the vellum to the back. <laughs> right, this is Master Louts 2 and I'm just going to use this to help me throughout these cards. I have this little banner, it has the stitching around the outside. I actually only own those two Master Layout sets, two and nine, numbers two and nine, and that's all I own, but I really, really love them. They are expensive and they are a good investment, and I usually make sure I can use a coupon code from scrapbook.com, that always helps out. But I shall keep saving my pennies, and hopefully that is something that I can work towards. Um, but I stamped out the Get Well Soon from the Vibrant Sentiments stamp set, and that fits nicely. It's just a really easy, simple card to put together. You could put a few little um, embellishments on this, some tiny little sequins or something. Um, yeah, not too overwhelming because it is a, a Get Well card. I do like the idea of putting in a little insert in the center here just because it breaks up all of that beautiful bright yellow. Um, I do like the yellow. You can round the corners if you like. Um, yeah, but it's just a really nice, clear, easy space. And I think that white really draws the eye in to where the person is going to write their sentiment or, you know, whatever they need to write. But that is card number one, done and dusted. I do love that little pearlescent look to it, I must say. So for this first one, we used an, a, you know, an entire continuous piece there and just put the image behind. But this next one, we're going to do a little more cutting up and look at individual elements. Now, for no reason in particular, other than showing you that you can use different packs other than the first one I did, um, I think this element up here was very, very tempting for me to use. And I think that would look beautiful in a scene like we did on the first card. But I want to show you one where we sort of cut out individual elements. And for this one, I'm going to pick this sheet here here. Now down the bottom on the right hand side of this page is sort of not something I would probably use as a whole. It has some, some individual elements there that I was, you know, I'm not quite sure how they work in all together, but I think maybe it's actually a couple of separate elements that you can do individually. So for this one, I'm going to use the Waffle Flower Window Trio die. This is definitely an older die set and I don't think it's available anymore. Um, but all you can do is just use three squares. If you have three square dies, then you can cut this out. And in fact, I did a card where I just cut them all out by hand and just used a um, paper trimmer or a, a blade, sorry, a cutting blade. And I just cut them out with a ruler and a blade and cut out three squares. In fact, I did. I believe I did a card where I did uh, nine squares, <laughs> nine squares on the front of a card front, and I cut them all hand, cut them out with just a ruler and a um, knife. And so, you know, there's, where there's a will, there's a way, there's always another way to do it, but I have this die, so I'm going to use it. And then from here, I'm going to cut out some of these little elements that I think would be fun to include behind our little windows. So I think some of this writing would be really nice, and I'm just going to try and catch a corner of whatever that thing is. I think that would be nice. I've cut out one of the individual elements, and then I'm also going to cut out a little of this... I guess they're flowers perhaps, or foliage, whatever that is over there. We will cut that out and that will become the third window as well. So if you have little scraps of alum or you have, uh, you know, pieces left over like that, then that will be a great uh, idea to use up these. I'm going to use the Gina K Black Foam Tape. I am uh, running low on foam tape. I do have my big, big roll, but I don't have uh, much that is in the way of foam strips or anything. So I'm definitely having to cut everything down at the moment, which is good because that tells me that I'm using the supplies that I have purchased and invested in. And then all I'm going to do, because I have all this exposed um, adhesive on the back from that foam tape, I'm just going to pop these little squares down and I will trim anything up later on. You know, if it pokes out of the sides or the corners, I will trim it up so it's all sorted afterwards. And that means that, again, this grey cardstock, this is the Jenny K Soft Stone, and that means that this is going to sort of, um, yeah, be popped up from the images again, like the last one. 
And anything that overhangs, I just trim this off or you can rip it off. This vellum is really easy to rip and it doesn't rip where the adhesive is. So really easy just to get rid of the excess little pieces because we don't want any of that poking up. Now, this is a case of I forgot to stamp my sentiment on here. I completely and utterly forgot. So, you know, do as I say and not as I do because this is not the way to do it. You do not want to be stamping a sentiment on top of our foam tape on the background <laughs> but you know we are where we are and we'll give it a go because I will use my stamping platform and basically that's the only reason why is because I completely forgot and now there is you know foam tape behind this um, so first of all we'll deal with that in a minute but first of all I put this down onto some plain black cardstock this is the black licorice from lawn form and I am just going to you know cut out with my um scissors my long bladed scissors and then from that same vibrant sentiment stamp set I'm going to stamp the thinking of you and I press this down really gently and then when I open it up you can see it actually missed in the middle so I am glad that I used my stamping platform now I can just press a little bit put a little bit more pressure or if you want you can actually take some pieces of cardstock and build up behind where you're trying to stamp build up the bit that hasn't quite reached because it doesn't have enough uh, behind it so you can build it up with a little bit of cardstock and that should even it out now here I'm going to do what I call my faux splatter <laughs> I take a glaze pen and I just add in little dots again if you remember this is something that you could probably do right at the very beginning before we adhered any of the vellum etc but I find it just as easy to do this controlled splatter and then I truly do get the you know the look that I'm after and I can put it in the places that I want it to go and I know it's not going to go over top of my sentiment or anything like that so a little bit of splatter and I think this looks really nice I'm going to add this onto a soft stone uh, card base as well and again it's still the same size at four and a quarter by five and a half inches and that is going to finish off that card I really really love the greys and black of this one for a thinking of you card I usually don't add too much um, shine or glitz or glitter or anything like that so I'm just going to leave this one as is Right, we are moving on to the next one, and this time we are going to be coloring the vellum. <laughs> so I have a card base, which is just shifted off screen, and then I have my card front here in front of me. And this is what I'm going to be working with. I also have the Spellbinders, this is the winter border set actually and again I've had this for a really long time and it has been great value for me there are lots of different edges in here that I use some of them are you know uh, independent of each other and then some of them they you know only partially cut one side or the other like this one and this is just going to add in a little bit of extra detail now I'm going to die cut this about no, not quite halfway a little bit further down than halfway and then just up from the bottom a little bit now you could use if you have like a decal edge trimmer you could use that for this you could use a die you could use um you know fancy scissors if you have scissors that have fancy edges on them you could do all sorts of things just to sort of get a little bit of a different edge and then I'm going to trim this off honestly I have no measurements I just estimate <laughs> I'm going to hold this up against my panel and I want there to be a decent gap through the center there this is where we are going to do our vellum and some coloring and add a little bit of color to our plain black and white vellum because that is always a really fun option if you don't want that monotone look that plain look then you can add color really really easily so as I said I am just holding these up against my background and then estimating how much I want there to be so you know this is what we end up with round about this much so that's on my card base and then I've got my two little pieces here that I have created now I've got this one here this is from the three quarter designs pack and I really like this butterfly beautiful and gorgeous I'm going to put in some pencil marks along here now you probably won't be able to see these but I'm putting them just above where I actually need covered and this tells me where I need to um, you know where I am able to put my vellum to and where I need to cut it so this is just a guide no one will see these pencil marks I could erase them if I wanted to but they're going to be well and truly covered up so no one's going to see them at all and then I'm going to cut here just so that I can see roughly where I need to be working 
And then this beautiful big butterfly is going to be the center of everything going on. I think this is a beautiful little piece. And to color this, I'm going to use some alcohol markers. Now I use my tri-blend markers and these are fabulous from Spectrum Noir because they have three different pens in each barrel. Now I'm actually going to use three different colors because on vellum, when you color, you always color on the reverse side. That is just much, much easier to stay within the lines. But um, it definitely mutes it. It definitely tones it down a little bit. So it's not going to be as bright as it is on the back um, when you look from the front. So I'm actually going to use three different colors and not just three different um, tones of the same color. So I'm using three different pens. These are my biggest recommendation for anyone who is not super confident in choosing that gradation of color, the, the colors that will blend together really nicely for alcohol markers. I absolutely 100% recommend these tri-blend markers. I've had them for a long time. I've never had a pen run out. And of course, there are three pens in each barrel. So I bought the 24 pack of these, a great investment. So it's actually 72 markers in there. Um, I highly recommend. You can get them in the bullet nib like I have or the brush tip. I prefer the bullet um, for the type of coloring that I do, but I will link those down below. They are most definitely been one of my best investments. Now with the butterfly, all I had to do was use some double-sided tape along with those pencil lines that I marked earlier on. Because of course when working with vellum we always have to figure out how to cover our adhesive. I have tried a few vellum adhesives, several different types. I've never found one that you truly can't see so I prefer to hide it. But by all means if you have a good one then go ahead and use it or you found a good way to hide it. That's even better. I kept the same sentiments from all the same stamp set here just to, you know, use a little bit less if we can. But I wanted to show you three different variations on how I used vellum and how I used that print vellum specifically um, rather than just regular vellum I have videos out there using normal vellum that doesn't have a pattern to it or anything but I wanted to show you some of these beautiful options now I have got some foam tape here this is the one millimeter foam tape from scrapbook.com which I love it is just the perfect height and if I want it more I double it up and I get my two millimeter um, but I absolutely love this it gives dimension without you know, insane dimension and, you know, having to think about postage and things. So I really do like this. Now for this one, I am going to add in some little droplets, some little clear droplets just to finish this off. I think it looks a little bit plain up the top. So a few iridescent sequins or some little clear gems or droplets. I think this would work really nicely. Just adds that little finishing shining touch. So tiny little drops of glue, which are going to dry clear. And then I just use a wax nail pencil, cheap and cheerful to pick these up and pop them in the right spot. So I hope that this has inspired you to use up some of your patterned vellum. Thank you so much for joining me and here are some videos that you may also be interested at the end of this video uh, that also deal with vellum. So enjoy those and I will see you in the next video. Thanks, bye.